Jesus will go with you. He will lead you to the throne. He who died his garments for you, and the winepress wrought alone. Farther on, still go farther, count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never, it is better farther on. At my grave I'll still be singing, though you weep for one that's gone. See Some weird stuff right there. Where that came from? Why, no one came from. It ain't gonna come here. Let's see. There's a church in the valley by the wild wood. No lovelier place in the dale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wild. Come, 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 come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come to the church in the wildwood, to the trees where the wildflowers bloom, where the parting hymn will be chanted, we will weep by the side of the tomb. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wild. Come, 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 come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. How sweet on a clear Sunday morning to list to the clear ringing bell. Its tones so sweetly are calling, oh, come to the church in the vale. Come, 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 come to the church in the Come, 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 come to the church in the vale. Come, no spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. From the church in the valley by the wildwood, when day fades away into night, I would fain from this spot of my childhood 
Wing my way to the mansions of light. Oh, come, 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 come to the church and the come, 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 come to the church in the veil. Come, come, come. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory. Let's see. How about this one? There's a house in Grumbler's Alley where I lived some years ago, and the walls were swiftly falling to decay. And the yard was full of thistles And that old roof was rotted so That the storms beating upon me night and day Then the Spirit came and told me Of a wonderful abode Where from wind and storm I'd find a safe retreat So the Savior sent his moving van And he took me up the road To the little house on Hallelujah Street I shall never forget the day That I moved from sin away And secured a change of address So complete Since that moment without fail I've been getting all my mail At the little house on Hallelujah Street Now the neighbors in the alley Where I lived in years gone by They have never ceased their talking from that day that I left them so abruptly without bidding them goodbye and from all the sin and shame I moved away since the shack of sin is empty where I lived so many years and no more they hear the treading of my feet I've moved away forever from the sorrow and the tears to my little house on Hallelujah Street now this house is nice and cozy and its walls so warm and tight. And the landlord doesn't charge me any rent. There's a garden in connection, filled with flowers gay and bright, where so many golden hours I have spent. Yeah, the landscape is so lovely, and the songbirds sing with glee. And I'm never hungry for good things to eat. And I'm never, never lonely, for the Savior dines with me at my little house on Hallelujah Street. Well, I've just received a letter from the king up in glory land that he soon is coming after all his own. He will roll down the avenue with retinue so grand, picking up the saved and blood washed all alone. When I hear the wheels are rumbling and I hear the angel's song, and I see that God's redemption is complete. I am sure he'll stop and take me from the place I've lived so long at the little house on Hallelujah Street. So I'm looking for the day when he'll carry me away and I'll make another move that can't be beat. When I leave this earthly veil, I'll no longer get my mail at my little house on Hallelujah Street. Now the champion marched for 40 days, saying, give me a man to fight. The Israelites said, we got a brave heart, but our feet are sort of full of fright. Then a boy with a sling, a pocket full of rocks that knew how to trust and pray. Said, if you're going to run, Goliath, you might as well take off now. 
because I came here to stay. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get her right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will. But I came here to stay. Now the decree had been signed by the hand of the king. Daniel still prayed to the Lord. The hungry lions pacing the den. Here comes supper, one roared. And if you'd have been standing anywhere close, you'd have heard Brother Daniel say, If you're talking about me, forget it, boys. I came in here to stay. Run if you want to, run if you will. I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get her right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will. But I came Now, the boys wouldn't bow. The king got mad and said, Turn that old furnace up. High time up. Throw them on in. The Hebrew boys are going to fry. A little while later, he looked in the furnace. He heard Brother Shadrach say, Pull up a chair, boys, and warm your hand. We came in here to stay. Run if you want to, run if you will. I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get her right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will. I want all the preachers to stand, every preacher. I've got a sermon, a stanza I wrote for you. On the way to Dallas in the plane. Now the preachers wouldn't bow. The state got mad and said, Turn those rules up high. Time up. Put the pressure on them. Their freedom and liberty is going to die. A little while later, they looked in the churches. They heard God's prophets say, We may burn, but we'll never bend. Our God's just the same today. Run if you want to, run if you will. But I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get her right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. Amen. I came here to stay. All right, one more song here, I think, and then we are going to get started. I got a lot to say to you today, so uh, we'll we'll get one more going here. And uh, let me see where I want to go here, and we'll be ready to go. Let's see here. How about this one? I like this one. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruling for everything, and all of my worry is rain. Some sweet day, our troubles will wait on me. Oh, the master. 
Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. by faith. That's what God wants us to do. I got to move this over maybe. Let's see here. All right. Well, anyway, we'll get this whole thing. This is all temporary, right? Just like life. It's all temporary. One day we're going to go home and we're going to be with the Lord. It's going to be over for us on this earth. So we have only this short amount of time to serve God and to do all the things that he would have us to do in this life. And I hope that you're doing all of that to the glory of God. Uh, yep. I shaved my beard down trimmed it down and i feel much better i don't feel like i have a dead rat on my face that's like everywhere that's like uncontrollable so uh, i like this it's more manageable for me it looks better uh, on me some guys can grow those big bushy things that can have a beaver stuck to their face and they look good with it i just don't like the way it looks it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me so um you know um uh, you know, that's that's just uh, uh, the way that it is. Amen. So anyway, I, I like it better that way. And, and uh, even my wife had to admit to me, too. She's like, boy, that does look better. She I don't think she wanted to admit that, but she did. She said, yep, that, that looks better. She just likes that big old mean snarly beard on me sometimes to scare all the effeminate men. But uh <laughs> Anyway, I like it better this way, and uh, it feels more comfortable. It's more me. This is my style. Um, but uh, anyway, and I, I got to do what uh, what the Lord leads me to do. And yeah, Carl's got a buffalo on his face. That's what his deal is. Anyway, uh, but I, I do want this broadcast, as we move forward with everything, I want this broadcast to be, um, I, I want it to be sharp. We have got some great plans ahead. All right, we have got some great plans. Brother Andrew and I did some talking here this last weekend, and um, we did some more. Uh, Brother Dave and I and Brother Scott uh, did some talking about what we're going to do there, and we're moving forward with everything. Get this, I don't. You guys don't know this, but I gotta, I gotta, um, I gotta tell you this. What happened? This is how the Lord provides for us. Okay, uh, we were heading to get a piece of insulation board for um for the the office out there and uh when we were out there uh we um we I, I told Dave I said Dave you know something I there's a there was a piece of green treated lumber outside this grocery store at their dumpster and man I mean we and he go and I said I don't know if we could use it but he says probably not for this uh, probably not for this, but, um, but, uh, you know, we could probably use it for something else for another, for another, um, project, you know, cause we're going to build a deer stand also so I can have a deer stand out there an enclosed big one out on my property. Well, anyway, so Dave said, well, we'll stop by there and look. So we went there and. We looked and I held and I looked in this dumpster and I held this up and when I held this up, uh, this guy, the manager comes out and he goes, "Hey!" And I thought he was going to tell me to get out of there and he goes, "Hey, take whatever you want." He goes, "Take as much as you want." And I said, "Okay." And I looked. I said, "Dave, what is this?" And it was all carpet tiles that they had just ripped out of this uh, floral shop and they were they were putting in a restaurant there and they just took all these floor tile uh floor uh carpet pieces and most of them were in really good shape right most of them were in really good shape well so we took that carpet tile and uh we had enough we're going to have enough to carpet that floor in that shop and we also have extra and we got it all for free out of that dumpster. I thought that was hilarious. Yes, I went dumpster diving. 
But uh, it was hilarious. Actually, Dave went dumpster diving. I just kind of watched but but uh, and grabbed the stuff when he was handing it to me. But we threw it in his big old truck, and we got out of there. And, the, you know, um, so we got carpet for there now uh, that, that's, uh, that'll be fine for that office and that shop there. We'll do some clean a little bit on there. But. The Lord provides, amen. God provided for us what we needed at the time, and he's continuing to, to provide. I got to get uh, one of these systems. I'll show you what it is here. Brother Jim sent me. Let's see if I can find it now. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I'll, I'll show you. Hang on. Let me let me put it somewhere, and I got to show you something else I got to have for out there. Cause see, I have to maintain a temperature for the books in my library, so I don't absolutely destroy my library. So I've got to maintain a certain temperature for that. Okay, uh, let me show you what what I'm gonna do. What I got to get here. Okay. And it was fun. what was funny is I I looked at these mats that I was gonna buy for inside there and just get like some rubber mats for the floor or whatever. And I told my and it didn't work out. And I and I told my wife and I don't even remember I didn't remember exactly saying that, but she remembered it and so did Dave. I said, well, God's gonna provide. God's gonna provide it all. That's He's just gonna do that. And um, you know we're gonna have everything that we need. Um, well. He did. He got the the carpet for us. I'll show you something else I need to get. Where is this? It's right here. So the next thing, the next thing that I need to get, is one of these. This is a ductless system. So I need one for about seven hundred and fifty square feet. Because 500 might be just shy. I think it's going to be closer to 600. But I got to get this right here. And I know God's going to provide it. And uh, maybe he'll use one of you to provide it. But uh, God, uh, the Lord's going to give it to us. God always does. He always he always shows me some way or another that, that he provides for everything that I need. And we're going to install this ourselves, I believe, uh, instead of paying. It was going to cost $3,200 for the unit. Um for the unit and the installation and that wasn't even heat now i have a heater in there but i'm gonna get i'm gonna get one with heat in it i think i think i'm gonna get um one of these so i have no idea oh that's a oh those are pretty cool anyway so i'm gonna i'm gonna look at getting one of these now i gotta start praying about this and uh, see what the Lord does with that. But anyway, I got to get one of those. So that's another phase that we're doing. We're building a wall. We got to get that going. We're getting the shelves up. We're building the wall. Um, I got some pictures I'll show you. So you can, I'm sure, I, I'll show you. Let's see. I put those on that chat the other day. Let's see if I can find that. I'll show you what we're doing so you understand the progress that we're making and Kind of, it's a, like right now. This won't show you the bookshelves that I put up. Uh, earlier, we put one stack up, but it won't show that. But that's okay. But it'll show you what the space looks like before. All right. Hang on. there not there there here we go well where'd that go that's supposed to go over there thank you very much okay so this is this is the Hey, look, there's Carl's video. This is the 
this is the space that we're we're really working with here. This is kind of what we're doing here. So you get an idea of what we're what we're doing. Okay. That's what that is. And this is all, that's all going to be transformed into that office space. Right. Uh, Deuce Vault asked me, do you need it or do you want it? Those are two different things. Well, Deuce, considering, I don't even know what your name means, but considering that you don't do anything for ministry like we're doing here. First of all, I don't even know why you're here, to be honest with you. Because I already know that Denlinger is your pastor. And Denlinger hates my guts. And he hates the ministry. Right? And he hates everything that I do. And he says that I serve a different God. So let's just put the cookies on the shelf for all the kids to reach. I don't even know why you're here. And who are you to ask me anyway what I'm doing as far as in this ministry goes? I this is this ministry, this this ministry is is a ministry of Old Paz Baptist Church. And we have about 12 men here, representative of, the, of their families. And and, and and that's the that's the group of men that I that I answer to. When it comes to things, besides the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, so is so. I mean, I have absolutely no idea why you would even care to be honest with you, uh, except just to like sling mud. But whatever. Anyway, back to what I was talking about, which is the future. I don't have time to worry about the past. By the way, Denlinger, it didn't work. Yeah, didn't change anything. Didn't have anything to do with anything. N nothing changed. His false accusations against me and all that other stuff didn't do any good. Just like all the other people, I'm like a freight train pressing on and moving forward. So anyway, uh, but so that's that's where that will go. Uh, oh, by the way, um, by, by the way, just so you know, um, number one, you could have just listened and then you could have learned without making a foolish judgment call about why i'm doing what i'm doing anyway uh but uh, and by the way this is not me being offended i mean like you understand like i i'm not i'm not offended at all it's called driven that's the difference so anyway so the, the point is is that when you have books when you have expensive video equipment, you can't let it you can't let it be in like uh, 20 below temperatures, 10 below temperatures like it is in Minnesota, like right now, like it's like 20 below, not now, not today. But tomorrow it'll be like 15 below zero probably, right? It's cold here. <laughs> you can't let humidity or brittle things get to books. It destroys them. And I have thousands of dollars worth of books. Many thousands of dollars worth of books that have been collected over the years. So that's the reason why. That's what I was thanking God for. The fact that I that the fact that 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 the Lord uh, provided out of a dumpster, right? <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's okay. But like I talked about on Friday, you'll always have your haters. You'll you'll always have them, and you got to just press on and move forward and not worry about it because they're going to be there no matter what. Anyway, uh, so this is going to be the studio. This is this is um, this is what's going to happen with that. Lord willing, so we are pressing on. And, and looking forward uh, to the future of what God's going to do. Amen. So uh, we are uh, looking at doing those things and uh, praising God for his provision for us. Right. And his care for for all that that we're doing right now. Uh, and it's a blessing that we're able to 
that God even provided this home for our family and that we were able to have this this see this was one of my this was one of my dreams was to be able to just walk down my driveway and be able to have something set up to where uh You know, to be able to have something set up to be able to record and to and to broadcast and to do those other things. Right? This was this this was uh this was answered prayer. You know, this was the Lord providing. So, and we thank God for it. And he's going to continue to provide for it. And, uh, and, uh, it's a blessing to, uh, you know, what I find is funny is I, every time I do a video about dealing with charismatics, I always have these weird men come on here or, or, or weird women come on here. And, uh, no, I'm not putting egg cartons up. I'm, I'm going to be putting up sound tiles. Uh, but, uh, and different insulation on the walls too. There's going to be a few things we're going to be doing uh, with that to uh, to make it make the sound better. So anyway, praise the Lord for that, right? But so anyway, so that gives you an idea of of what we're doing and what we're working on right now. And wait till you see the finished product. It'll be a blessing for sure. And um, the men of Old Paz Baptist Church and uh, are the ones that are doing the work. We're all we're we're gonna do it together. Amen. Working on it together. So. So anyway. We praise God for that, and we're gonna we're gonna move on now, okay? But you just keep praying uh, for um, for for what the Lord would have us to do in the future, and I'm excited about it. And I want to get to this video here. I know I'm a half an hour in here, but I thought I'd give you that testimony there. These are broadcasts. I don't try to do them quickly. People can fast forward ahead if they want to, to the other things. But I generally believe that a lot of people, uh, uh, that a lot of people, they really want to kind of know what we're doing in our ministry. They enjoy, they enjoy these talks and the conversations. They enjoy, you know, uh, us communicating with them and letting them know. Because there's people that have supported this ministry for years, you know. And they they want to like to be informed on how we're doing and how everything's going. So we're excited about that as well. So you pray for us. That's the next thing you can pray for is pray for one of these. All right? Pray uh, for the Lord to, to do that and um, to provide that. And it'll be exciting to see what God does. We're looking forward to it. Amen. And we know he will. He always does. All right. Now we are going to get into Catherine Crick. And oh, my word. Um, Catherine Crick is a Jezebel. She is an absolute Jezebel, and she is a false teacher. She is a false apostle. So that's the first place we're going to go is the scriptures, and I'm going to show you this. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. There is no great thing if his, it, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Now, 
We are going to get into this right now. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. This made me mad. When I saw this, when I saw this, I got mad. Um, I got mad at her lies and her deception. I got mad at the things that, uh, at, that she put on there. I already cut him off. He's gone. I just cut him off. So you don't have to worry about him anymore. He's gone. But anyway... So I'm going to show you who this this female apostle is who calls herself. By the way, do you think it might be an important thing? Out of curiosity, let's see. Let's We're going to move this over here. We're going to move whoops, not that. We're going to move this over here. We are going to move we are going to move this over here. Now, do you think, do you think that it might be important? There, I'll move it up so you don't have to see that. I'm not trying to defile anybody. I'm honestly not. Do you think that it would be important that if God had called a woman to be an apostle that he would give instructions and that he would actually have ordained an apostle himself when he was here think about that there were never there was never a female apostle ever in the Bible. Guess what else there wasn't? There has never been a female pastor in the Bible. God never ordained a female elder. Jesus never ordained one. Paul said the bishop must be the husband of one wife. So there never was a female pastor in the Bible. There never was a female apostle in the Bible. You would think that if there was, that Jesus would have told us. Now, this is this lady back in 2017. In my opinion, this is how she got popular. I mean, I'm going to be real with you, okay? She's dressed like a seductive tramp. That's how she looks there. Whatever she's trying to prove, and I didn't watch this whole video. Oh, yeah. My wife watched that part. We're done with this this one here. Um, but basically, basically, She's a, she's a seductive tramp that I believe has gotten famous off the way she looks first and that Satan used her, right? Satan used her to defile many. Now, that's how these charismatics work, but they always have this weird, seductive, nasty, perverted spirit. They all have it. Paula White has it. I'll work my lips and my hips, she said. I know he didn't leave me because of that, she said, because I work my lips and my hips. And how about the other, the lady that was sitting cross-legged? Uh, Bill, uh, what's that guy's name? That Bill Johnson, right? Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson out there. Uh, his daughter-in-law or his daughter. His daughter-in-law, his or his daughter, whichever one. I think it's his daughter. Yeah, it's his daughter. His his daughter out there. Right? She says the Holy Spirit is sneaky. 
And the way she says it is like somebody that's flirting with somebody. Like she, they're flirting with the Holy Ghost. Like they're, they're talking very sexual and seductive. That's what they're doing. That's how they treat God. That's who they say God is. Well, it is who their God is. It's not who my God is. My God is holy. My God is the God of the Bible. But these charismatics, they have a different God. They don't serve the God of the Bible. They have a different spirit. And it's a seductive one. And it starts with seduction like that. Sorry. Let me get off of that. And she's in some... Whoop, oh, sorry. She's in some Xena... Let me just click off that stupid thing. She's in some Xena warrior... Here's another video she does where she's like some Xena warrior princess lady, right? Then she's standing there all seductive like that and that's who she is and blah, blah, blah and all this other stuff. Well, those are her first videos. Right? Until she became the apostle here. Uh, but that's how she became famous. Now, the reason I found out about her was from was from J.D. Hall's ministry. And, uh, and I'm going to show you the video here uh, of, of her fake exorcisms. Well, that's one of them. I, I can show you another one, too. Here's another one. We'll show you this one. I want to show you her fake exorcisms. Then I want to show you... The, the other thing that I want to show, and I got plenty of video today to, to, to go through this and plenty of scripture to give you about it. I already told you, I, if you, if you didn't see my broad or my teaching, um, if you didn't see my teaching on Wednesday night, uh, let me go to my teaching on Wednesday night for you. Okay. Wednesday night's teaching was on the signs of an apostle versus charismatics and the papacy. Now, I want you to understand something. I didn't even know this Catherine Crick lady existed when I put this together. The Lord led me to preach on that, so I did. And then, like the next day, two days later, I find, two, or about three or four days later, I find this video of this crazy psycho lady, devil-possessed Jezebel, Right? Teaching and seducing the servants of the Lord and teaching and seducing others. And by the way, infusing devils in them and keeping them in bondage. Somebody said, I've been listening to Joyce Myers. Why would you? Joyce Myers is a Jezebel. Now, Aaron, millions of people have watched her videos. Millions of people have watched her videos. This Catherine Crick, the Apostle Catherine Crick. Not kidding you. Millions. So I'm going to show you her fake stuff. Then I'm going to show you her reasons why she says it's okay or that it's that God called her, ordained her an apostle, and she has the authority to do this. And that all women have the authority to be in ministry. Women should be leaders in the church. There's somebody here who had a surgery and it like messed your body up ever since. I declare healing to you now. I declare healing to you now. I don't know if somebody's here and has bad gas. Um, is anybody here with bad gas? I declare healing for your bad gas right now. You declare it, huh? Oh, okay. Well, then it's over, lady. Because if you declare it with your stinking tight 
painted on britches with your stinking gross clothing that you dress like a tramp. Yeah, I, I'm real, okay? If you want that guy to do that that that, that calm little, uh, I'm telling you, I get fired up against that Jezebel spirit because it's like I hear background music coming. You know what the background is? The background music is like, ride, Jehu! Ride, Jehu! Ride! Ride, Jehu! That's that's the background music that I hear when I when I hear that. It's like it's like ride. Because I, I, I hate that spirit so much. I hate it. I loathe it. I hate it. And your body to be restored now in Jesus' name. And I'm praying right now for the clothes of a harlot to not be worn by you. The spirit of the clothes of a harlot not to be worn. I declare the spirit of the clothes of a harlot not to be worn by you anymore. And that you would actually be clothed in your right mind. Okay, well, we can all declare stuff, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. You just healed your knee? Hallelujah. I had surgery. I had surgery. After you had surgery. I had ACL surgery when I was 16, and ever since then, like, I can't, I couldn't sit down. Oh, wow. That feels great. <laughs> your jaw to be unclenched now in Jesus name. Oh, I speak this jaw to open up. <laughs> I can't help it. I speak this jaw to open up. Look, all I know is, is most ladies don't have a problem with that jaw opening up. Okay. <laughs> so They need that. They need that jaw to close. <laughs> we keep that jaw shut, man. I'll get you in trouble. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. Oh, I you you go. <laughs> I oh. I have a lot of fun with these charismatics. I'm, t I'm telling you, I can't help it. I just, there's something I just want to drive straight through. Oh, man. Oh. I speak all the pain to leave now in Jesus' name. And I speak you'll be able to eat now. You must be able to eat. And your jaw open up and down, up and down with no. I speak spaghetti to you right now. Real spaghetti, real noodles, and real spaghetti. And uh, I speak pizza with anchovies to you right now. Problem in Jesus' name. <laughs> Every spirit keeping her jaw clenched must yeah, leave her. Yeah, because see, here you have to understand something. <laughs> you have to understand something. There's there's spirit. There's spirits that are keeping her jaw wired shut. I speak the I I speak to the spirits that are that are holding her jaw. Every every spirit, because there's because there's like 30 of them, man. They're all just holding their jaws shut. They're just like, don't let this woman open her jaws. Oh man. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah! Look at me. On three, every spirit, keeping her jaw clenched, must leave her. One, two, three. Out now. She just calls one, two, three, and it's like, oh, it's like, it's like time out kind of for kids, like, or, or parents that give their children like three chances. Right? Where she goes, where she goes like, where she goes like this, one, two, three. It's like hypnosis. Do you understand what she's doing is hypnosis? When people hypnotize people, 
when 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 the, when you go to somebody for hypnotism that they will do number things like that one two three that's oh that's like it's like mind control stuff all right it's satanic is what it is do you understand that like that's what um that's that's what they're doing Th what she's doing is imparting devils that's right aaron i'm gonna show you some other videos you're gonna watch she not only impart this lady not only imparts devils onto people she imparts them onto whole churches she imparts them onto whole churches <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And by the way, they always have buckets for people to puke in. Well, I got to admit, this lady standing over me and trying to preach to me makes me want to puke. It makes me want to vomit. I want to puke when I think about this puke sitting in front of me thinking she's an apostle and she's going to preach the Bible to me. Yeah, I want to puke. I do. Give me a barf bag, will ya? I want to barf. Put some clothes on, will ya? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And what, just what are you thanking him for? I mean, what are you doing? She's not doing anything. It's all a part of the game. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. This jaw must be able to open up and down without pain now in Jesus' name. Yeah, because the demon was holding your jaw up and down. You know when my back hurts, I don't go... Okay, right now, I declare every spirit of demon that's holding my vertebrae apart right now to, like, get out of there. So, no, I go to a chiropractor, and they adjust my back, you stinking whack. How can people believe this? I must make you go. <laughs> Your time is up. Look, what is it that she owes? You spirit that's keeping her jaw clenched. What is it that she owes? Okay, so, so here's what I'm going to say to you right here. I'm going to say something to you right here with this. This right here is superstition. I'm not, a, I'm not a bit afraid of any of these people or anything they do. And the reason why is because I have the power of the Holy Ghost of God. I have the Word of God, which has the real... I have the Gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. That's exactly what I have. So here's the thing. You're te what you're going to notice in these videos, and by the way... These charismatics come into Baptist churches. I've had them here before, and you can't sniff them out right away. It took years for me to realize I had, I had one here. It took me years to realize it, that they were nothing but a closet charismatic the whole time. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what they were. A little closet charismatic the whole time. Casting out, trying to cast out devils out of everybody and trying to do all that kind of stuff and try to think everything's a devil. Everything's devil possession. Everything's a demon. Right? And saying that, oh, you, you're, you have to, you have to, uh, uh, renounce this and renounce that. You know, you know what you, you know what the power of God unto salvation is? Let me show you. Let me show you what frees every man and every woman alive. Let 
Let me show you. Here you go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God and his salvation. You want to know, you want to know what delivers every man? That gospel I preach. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if any, and if any devil tells you any differently and says, you got to renounce what happened to you when you were six years old, when you ate six Twinkies and you stole a seventh one. You got to renounce what you did when you were a little kid because you kissed somebody. You got to renounce this and you got to renounce that. And you got to go back and you got to dig in deep back into your life and find every single sin that you ever committed because that's the only way if you don't confess that you won't be forgiven and that devil won't come out and all this other stuff. Show me what one Bible verse that says any of that. It is a lie from the pit of hell. And I'll tell you why I'm so passionate about this. Because I had people at a time that started to sway me into that direction. They started to sway me into that direction. And I started to, to uh, go that way. And I'll tell you what, you better be careful with chick tracks and all those other things. Because a lot of those things do that. A lot of those things start leading down that way. And I don't care if nobody likes it out that I say it. I don't really care if somebody has a problem with it. I really don't. Because I'm not beholden to anybody but that book right there. This King James Bible right here. This book. This is what, and the God of this book, that's who I'm beholden to. Right there, the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. I don't believe any of this stupid nonsense they're playing and these games. And if you believe that deliverance is outside of the gospel, then you got something wrong with your brains too. And you need this Bible right here. And you need the Holy Ghost of God because he's the one that delivers people. Anybody tells you any differently, they're lying to you. They're, they're lying to you and they got another spirit and they're going to deceive you. If this gospel right here that I preach can't deliver any man from his sin or from any devil, then why would I preach it? You telling me I got to go to some silly slut and paint it on pants and she's going to deliver me from devils? It's nonsense. It is the gospel that's the power of God unto salvation. It's this book right here. It's being redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. You can't remember every sin you committed ever since you were born. You can't possibly go back and remember all those things. You can't possibly go back and try to dig down in deep and try to remember all that. You need to know you're a sinner and you need to know that Jesus Christ is a great savior. That's what you need to know. If you ask me why I'm yelling, maybe if you got saved, you'd start yelling too. I don't like being deceived by the devil. I don't, I don't like being tricked by the devil. And let me tell you, I was deceived and I was tricked. And you know what? Here's the thing about that. When that happens and you're a child of God, here's what God does. He corrects you. He corrects you with his rod of correction. He whoops you. And then he says, this will never happen to you again, my son. You will never be fooled by this. You will never fall for this again. I will see to it that you never fall for this again. And, and you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And you'll never be deceived by any of this nonsense or anything in between. So, you're, you, you might notice that I, I have a war against it. 
you might notice that that I hate it. Oh, I do. See, God taught me to hate it. And I hate it. Because it's fundamentally against the gospel that we preach. Fundamentally against it. It teaches something contrary to the scriptures. Speak now. <laughs> then you must leave. According to the seed she's given. I command. I command every. What's your name? I command the spirit of Baal. To yeah, that's the spirit of Baal. That's what it is. Yeah, because in the Bible, when Jesus delivered devils out of people, they all just started barfing everywhere. Everybody just got barf bags out. Hey, grab the barf bags. And they just so happen to have trash cans sitting there for when people are going to, you know, uh, when, when people are going to puke because they're being delivered, you're going to barf. And green stuff's going to fly out your nose and all this other stuff's going to happen. Oh, thank you. I got the fur ball up. Thanks a lot. Right? It's like a it's like a big fur ball, right? They got to cough up like a like a cat has. That's what that's what happened. And that's like, "Oh, it's deliverance." That's amazing. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. <laughs> You can you can move your jaw. This is so ridiculous. I can't believe anybody actually believes that that was real. Because you know you gotta have the puke buckets there to make it real. You gotta you gotta have that. I'm gonna show you another one that really shows how fake it is. By the way, by the way. Um, did anybody see, did anybody hear the gospel, which is the power of God and his salvation? Did anybody hear the gospel being preached? Did anybody hear that person repenting and believing the gospel, turning to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Did it, did anybody, did anybody see, hear that? Did anybody hear the real power of God and salvation? Well, that's what you know with charismatics. See, that's what they do. Oh, you can't get saved until you cast the devils out. You can't do this until you do that. I know charismatics that the street preachers that were, that were having, having, um, uh, have it they were casting out devils out of their children uh on a weekly basis in their in their bible devotion time hey how's that for healthy for you right oh i'm gonna cast out I, i'm gonna tell my children they're possessed all the time and i'm gonna cast out devils out of them Oh, you command it in Jesus' name that it would never return. I bet it listens to you now. Nothing will stop you from eating anymore. You will no longer have pain in your jaw. You'll be able to eat what you want. You can chow down on anything, on steak. You can chow down on all right, man. She's like, yes, steak, steak. Steak, steak, yes. Uh, apples, everything. You can eat now. Are you kidding me? I can have a steak? Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, don't do that. You don't want to do that. Don't be releasing the anointing now. You release the anointner. Who remembers the anointner? Man, Carl, find me the picture of the anointner, man. Find me that picture, Carl, somewhere. We got it. We got it. She called for the releasing of the anointner. Carl, go, try to find that. You or Peter, one of you guys, try to find the picture and put it in the, the chat on Facebook. Right? Russ Dizdar was a stinking fake, just like this lady is. Absolute stinking fake, just like this lady was. It's the gospel that delivers men's souls, and that guy was working for somebody else. I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, moving right along. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's another thing she said. Was Ooh, this is how God's revival is going to spread. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you were preaching and all the time and that's what you've seen all the time. Of course, they don't really preach. But if you were walking along here and uh, and you saw this all the time, wouldn't it bother you a little bit? Right? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be kind of weird if you if you um? If you were just going along your merry way there, and then all of a sudden, I mean, people just started, you know, uh, doing this all the time. I break every generation of curse. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want her now to sell myself to the devil. I break that covenant now, that pact. Leave her now in the order you came in. Hallelujah. I can't hear them no more. Hear what? The demons. I don't hear the voices anymore. They're gone. You're free. Jesus set you free, hon. Hallelujah. I think she wrote on that list and that come out in the order you entered her now. Somebody called. One, two, three. Somebody called for a releasing of the Neutner, and somebody let him out of his cage. There he is. There he is. They said they were going to release the Neutner, and boom, there he is. There's the Neutner. He's free. Free at last. The Neutner is free. Right? Look at that. Huh? He said, you rang. You rang. There you go. You rang the Neutner. He's like, yeah, I'm out. I'm free. Woo! -hoo! Somebody called for me. It's about time. I haven't, I have been able to work for like a year. The Neutner is free. There he is. You know, hey, leather and lace. You know what's detrimental for your freedom? Jesus Christ and Him alone. It is Jesus Christ who saves men's souls. It is Jesus Christ who fills them with his spirit. And there's no satanic mind control. There is nothing that can stop that. It is Jesus and him alone. Someone called for the anointer, though, and he had to come out. 
I know you never knew about the Neutner, but you heard her. She said, I released the Neutner, and there he is. He came out. He's like, I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I command on free every spirit attack to what has just been renounced. Must leave her now. Because there's something about that one, two, three that that devil has to come out when you count. It doesn't like the number four. It's like you. It's like when parents tell their children, "All right, I told you one, two. Well, if you get past one, two, and three, I mean, if you if you have got past one, then you're not in control of anything." Right? One, two, three. I mean, you're not in control of anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're free, honey. Jesus freed you. Jesus freed you, honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How absolutely confusing do you think it is to these children of what they're doing? How absolutely confusing is it that these children are going through? What do you think this does to the mind of these children, the, the games they're playing with them? It's not even Bible. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus, right now. All she did was put devils in her. All she did was open her up to satanic activity. That's, do you hear what she's saying? That's Jesus. Hallelujah, that's Jesus. No, Jesus of the Bible is found here. The Jesus of the Bible is found here. That's another Jesus, another gospel, and let it be accursed. I don't care who it is. I, I don't care if it's Bill Schneblin. I don't care if it's Russ Dizdar. I don't care who it is. You don't find any of that stuff prescribed in the scriptures. Oh, you see, the Bible didn't know about satanic ritual abuse, so Russ Dizdar and Bill Schnebel, the Schnebelator, had to come along, and he they all had to teach God, and all the charismatics had to rise up, and they had to teach God what real deliverance was. No, my friend, we call those people devils. Because this book has the answer. And I have absolutely zero problems calling those devils out. None. Now then. Receive this anointing and be full of peace and joy and love this family. Thank you, Jesus. He's free. He's free. What happened? He said, I got him to renounce any oath that he made. Knowingly or unknowingly to the demons going to Satan. And then he threw up a bunch. Not just bile, but it was like throw up. And then he started smiling and crying. Hallelujah! Oh yeah, he just you know, I got him to renounce the cookies he stole when he was like four and you know, those devils came in when he when he ate too many uh Keebler elf cookies. And um because he ate those Keebler Elf cookies, I, uh, yeah. And then he just started barfing, and he was like, then he smiled. 
Oh, it's awesome. I come in every new spirit to be more They have to leave when she renounces those things. They know that's the key. I swear every generation of Yeah, see that? Anyway, I don't want to distract this broadcast with everything about Russ Dizdar. I really don't want to. Okay, let's see. By the way, every charismatic leaning person likes Dizdar. Every Pentecostal likes Dizdar. They... I mean, those people tend to like him, I should say. Not everyone. Okay, anyway, back to what I was doing here. Let's see. The next one I wanted... By the way, let's get into why she says that uh, it's okay for her to teach. That it's okay for her to preach. That she could be an apostle. And this is why women this is why women can do that. She's going to tell you now why why women can do that. Right? She's going to inform you Catherine Crick, the apostle falsely so called, is going to tell you. Now, Okay. By the way, that seduce, that word seduce is three times in the King James Bible. Okay? That word seduce is three times in the King James Bible. Okay. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Revelation 2.20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins in the hearts, and I will get unto every one of you according to your works. Well, if it's not Bible, it's if it's not a Bible prescription, then it's witchcraft. Plain and simple. Now, the Bible says that a bishop must be the husband of one wife. That's a man. The Bible specifically says man more than once. Right? The Bible says it more than once concerning the office of a bishop. 
Now, an apostle, which there weren't very many of, but the apostles were men. Jesus chose men to be apostles, and he ordained men to do that work. Now, Catherine here is going to explain to you why, why we're all wrong. I'm going to show you a couple videos of this so you understand. 1434. Apostle Paul says, let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. Why now, that's not the King James Bible, is it? Right? What does she have there? 1 Corinthians 1434. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. They have no permission by God to speak. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Okay, that's one witness. Here's another one. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, to seize, hold in possession by force or without right, to usurp a throne, to usurp the prerogatives of the crown, to usurp power, to usurp the right of a patron. Patron. It's to seize. I suffer not a woman to teach. Look what he says here. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. But to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, stay home and bake cookies. No, that's not what it says. Notwithstanding, be barefoot and pregnant. But well, sort of what it says. It says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Saying her place is the home. Her place is rearing children. Her place is not leading the church. Okay. Now she's going to explain to you why none of that's true. And, and you guys are wrong. As the law also says. Why did he preach that? When you look at scripture, you need to look at the time period. And you need to look at the context. Oh, the time period. See, now I have to look at the time period. And if I looked at the time period, I would understand that things have changed. I mean, it's just, just, you know. Text, what was going on at that church of Corinth? The women in the church were being loud and distracting during. Okay, well, that's not what he was saying. Here, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, what was he saying? 
he was laying down the order of the sexes and he was saying the gospel doesn't change the order of the sexes. The gospel has never changed the order of the sexes. God never changed any of that. And Paul is reminding of them the reason why. Because the woman was deceived. church that's just what they were doing at that time because they were being that way this obviously was making it so god's word was not being able to go forth because there was so much distraction it was messing with the work of god so because of what was going on apostle paul used wisdom for this moment in time and spoke a prophetic direction okay oh he spoke a prophetic direction i didn't know that i didn't know that was called a prophetic direction i didn't know that. I mean, when he laid down the office of a bishop and he said it was to be the husband of one wife and we never have one woman ever being ordained in the Bible as a pastor. We never have a woman being ordained as an apostle in the Bible. But you're going to tell me that, oh, that was just a prophetic direction because some women were kind of loud in church. Women, you guys need to keep silent in the churches. Ask your husbands at home. Apostle Paul was not saying that for all women. And his name is not Apostle Paul. She says it like it's his name. He was just speaking that for these women at that time because of what they were doing. We also see Apostle Paul using women in his ministry. He sends Phoebe to deliver the epistle Romans. She would have been delivering it. She would have been sharing. No, she would have been sharing it. To deliver a letter is to deliver a letter. She delivered a letter to the church. That's not some like grand, there wasn't like, like some grand entry into there where trumpets were playing and she walked up to the assembly and she was the one that did all the leading. That's so ridiculous. He gave her the scroll and said, could you please deliver this? Sharing her words about the word of God. We also see God using so many women in the Bible to speak, to have places of leadership. By the way, whoever said that a woman never spoke? Whoever said that a woman never speaks at any time? It's where she speaks and how she speaks and what she speaks and in what manner she does that that is consistent with the roles of the sexes that have not changed. See how she's twisting scripture? It's because she's a devil. She's got devils. Miriam was a prophet. Yeah, Miriam was a prophetess. And when, when Miriam, which was basically a singer, that's what she did, she sung. Um, but when Miriam, when she spoke against Moses, God struck her with leprosy and left her outside of the camp. Because she usurped authority. Oh, yeah, I guess you forgot about that one, didn't you? I'll leave that one out. Prophetess. Deborah was a prophetess and judge. She was, and it was a shame to Israel. It was an absolute shame to Israel. Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. And by the way, check and see who's in the, who's in the, um, let's look there. Let me show you this here. Uh, let's see. Um, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Japhetha. Wait, where's Deborah? Oh. Yeah, she's not in there. 
Okay. One of the tests, by the way, of a, of a pastor, one of the qualifications of a bishop is that he rule well his own house. It's impossible for a woman to rule the house under God's eyes well because she's not allowed to rule her husband's house. She's to be in subjection to her own husband. Oh. Oh, yeah, I guess that'd be a problem, wouldn't it? I, I guess it would be. Hulda, the prophetess, Anna, the prophetess, Priscilla, who was a teacher. Jesus had many. Priscilla, who was a teacher. Priscilla and Aquila, husband and wife, discipled a, a young man named Apollos. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's, oh, I guess, yeah. They, they, it doesn't say anything about in the assembly. It doesn't say that, that Priscilla stood up and said, hey, I got this, Apollos, shut up. Many women who assisted him in his ministry and were actually disciples. Fans of Jesus are different than followers. The followers were disciples. They weren't there just to watch, but they were to learn and receive anointing to be able to. Receive anointing. Where do you see that? Where was that at that I, I'm supposed to wait around to receive an anointing? Where? They were to receive anointing. To be vessels of God. Jesus chooses to appear after he resurrected to a woman. One but she was never called an apostle. She was never called an apostle. She never healed anybody. She never had apostolic authority. Right? What's your point? account says Mary Magdalene another account says Mary Magdalene and another woman now this was not accident it wasn't like Jesus didn't know who he was going to appear to first God chose to reveal himself resurrected for the very first time to women and and why does that how does that have anything to do at all period with having the permission to pastor or be an apostle how does that have anything to do with that where do you get that from we see him say mary go share with others share with the other disciples that i'm alive that you've seen me him saying that he was saying share the gospel spread the gospel that's Okay, now here's where I want to say something to crazy Jezebel lady. Number one, you don't even preach the gospel. You don't preach to anybody the gospel. Number two, whoever said that women can't share the gospel with people? Whoever said that women don't? I have seven children. My wife has shared the gospel with my seven children. Well, maybe not Gideon yet, but my wife has done, the, the women of this church do. Other ladies that come to this church or that visit, my wife has shared the gospel with them. Why would you think that we would say any differently? Because we believe the Bible. Of course women are to share the gospel. When people come over to their house to do work and things like that happen, our ladies give them gospel tracts. Our ladies have had conversations with them before. That's not the same thing as leading a church. Not at all. This is where your argumentation is, is wicked as hell.
That's what the gospel is, that Jesus is alive. How can anyone say that God doesn't want to use women to speak about him? To speak about... Who, who ever said that God doesn't want women to speak about him? About him in the church. In Genesis, it talks about how man and women were created equal. Now, I'm not talking about marriage. Oh, here's where she gets squirrely. Now watch the satanic twisting here. Watch the state, the satanic twisting. Right? Because now she's going to say, oh, men and women were created equal. Well, actually, Paul says they weren't. Paul said there was an order for Adam was first formed, then Eve. Man didn't come from woman. Woman came from man. And man is the head of a woman. That's the truth. Feminism teaches you the complete opposite. Feminism teaches you that man comes from woman. It's not true. God's word says differently. There's different roles, which are more of physical roles, because on heaven, you're not even married. On earth. Okay, what does heaven have to do? What does heaven have to do with marriage on this earth? In that sense, what goes on in heaven when we go home to be with the Lord is way different than what God set down his order in the scriptures. This psycho chick doesn't know the Bible. She's an emotional basket case of garbage. You're married. And so God has a different order and way for women and men. They have different differences and different roles as a married couple. But that married couple doesn't translate into God's ability to use men and women. And no one ever spoke of God's ability to use men. And when did we ever say God's not able to do anything like that? We never said that. We said God doesn't permit women to do it. He said they're not permitted to do it. That's what he said. That's very specific language. God said they're not permitted to do it. They are not permitted to do it. And roles in the church. So actually, it's the same Holy Spirit that's in a man and a woman. Of course it's the same Holy Spirit. But their roles don't change. Just like I'm a husband. And the Holy Ghost is in me. And the same Holy Ghost is in my wife. Of course. I don't. But I'm still her husband. And I'm still the head of the home. And she's still supposed to surrender herself and submit herself. Those roles didn't change. Jesus didn't change the roles and come and say, hey, you could do what you want now. Men aren't supposed to lead anymore. Men and women are all the same. In fact, Jesus laid down in the beginning, made them male and female. So her argument is so ridiculous. There's not a female Holy Spirit that goes into females and a male Holy Spirit that goes into males. It's the same Holy Spirit. And the gifts that God pours out, they're the same gifts. I, I agree with that. They are the same gifts. However, however, God placed man and woman in their roles and he gifts them and equips them in order to use those gifts in the roles which he put them in. Just like this verse says. When it talks about that. It says, and Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. He says, yeah, that same Holy Ghost is in her too and has equipped her and protected her 
to fulfill the role that he has gave her. By the way, do you think it's an accident that he ends it with that? And what does he begin the next chapter with? Look, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach of the snare of the devil. Well, that's pretty specific, isn't it? Philip in the New Testament had four daughters who prophesied. I know, I've covered all this in my sermons on Deborah. Those four daughters prophesied in their home. They spoke in their home. Did they preach? No. But again, Pentecostals and Charismatics, they love it, man. They absolutely love it. They, 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 they want to push that. They want to push that envelope. Oh, they like it because they got the Neutner. They got the Neutner on them. They got the Neutner, right? This guy comes and see him all the time. They got the Neutner, man. They got the Neutner. They're not girl gifts, which are weaker, and man gifts, which are stronger. No, they are spiritual. God is a spirit. When a true anointed woman of God is sharing spiritual truths, it's not just for women. God's not partial. Oh, really? Yeah, so so what you're saying is, is that that God has told you that that you're able to preach and it's not because what you're able to say is just not for women. I mean, what's wrong with you anyway? I mean, what do you think? You think you think God was serious about all that stuff? Here she is again, the devil in red. Right? Here she is again. Right? So she's back again. And uh, yeah, she's showing up and she's going to tell you the truth about women in ministry by the Apostle Catherine. She pastors the, she, she's the apostle over, excuse me, the apostle and pastor over the fivefold church. Spiritual realm, there is no man or female. Did you know that? Did you know that in the spiritual realm, there's no male or female? Where's the spiritual realm? Because I live in this realm. And I've been given directions that there are male and female. Right? Physically, I'm a woman. You're a woman. You're a man. You're, there's a distinction in the physical realm. And even marriage. You know, it's a, it's, it's a physical thing. Even husband and wife. Because in heaven, we're not. This doesn't exist still. Why? Because this is actually physical things. So even when you see when you see scripture about you know when it's talking about wives submit to hu husbands, this is 
talking about like physical earthly things. It's not oh, it's not talking about spiritual things. I mean, I mean, if my wife wants to be a pastor and she's got the anointing on her, right? If the look, if the anointer's not in his box and he's out of his box, then hey, she could just start preaching and being a pastor. Because she's got the anoint in her. You, you, just, you don't understand. It reminds me of something. You know, that red and stuff that remind it reminds me of something that I should probably show you, I guess. I mean that Neutner shows up everywhere. You saw him, right? He's right there. She, sorry. There's the Neutner. Okay. There's the Neutner. And here's the Neutner. If we open it up, it's going to ooze. And if we open it up, it's going to leak. And if we open it up, it's going to smell. And we open it up, it's going to hurt. But if we don't open it up, if we don't open it up, it won't get better. It won't get better. It'll just stay bitter. And if it stays bitter, it won't get better. It'll stay bitter. It'll stay bitter and resentful and angry because nobody told you it was going to be like this. And I don't even want to open this up in public because I know how deep it is. But the Lord, while the anointing is passing by, there's too much anointing in this room to minister to everybody there's else. Too much. And leave you sitting over there there's festering too much. and festering and festering and festering. Especially it's festering! It in a joking way, but it's... It's festering. There's there's too much. You, you don't understand. He showed up, man. You can't. Look, when that dude shows up, who? Who are you talking about? Oh, him. The Neutner. When when he shows up, you, you just, you, oh, 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 you don't understand, man. He showed up. They can't stop. They can't help themselves. Why? He showed up. Look, Neutner's there. Neutner right there. Right? Neutner's showing up. You don't. You just don't understand. You, you don't understand. Especially when the spirit of suicide hangs around your house trying to get you back. Oh! 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 I call it out! I mean he done did it, man. He called it out. Hooker boots. Hallelujah, holy God. Hallelujah, holy God. Hallelujah, holy God. They keep saying the same thing. Holy Ghost, hallelujah, holy ghost, hallelujah, holy ghost, hallelujah. But you're supposed to believe that's the Holy Spirit of God. Same spirit. Right? Same spirit. TD will take care of it, though. You don't get to run, you don't get to hide, you don't get to quit, you don't get to faint. You don't get to do any of that. Because it's not a stage that you prayed for, it's not a building that you prayed for, it's not an opportunity that you prayed for. Or that Lamborghini that you prayed for, wasn't that either. 
you've always wanted God to make a man out of you and he's using the stage to make a man out of you he's using the building to make a man out of you he's using the opportunity to make a man out of you standing back up on his feet put him back, back up on his feet back you're up gifted hit you're it with anointed. the noiter you've hit always it with been that. gifted because you've been broken you've always been gifted because you've been broken you've Hit him with it again, TD. Hit him with it again. Get him with the Neutner. Hit him with the Neutner again. Hit him with it. Hit him with the Neutner again. Get him again. You've always been gifted because you've been broken. And you know how to flow. And you know how to bless everybody. And everybody got your gift, but nobody got you. Nobody got you. Nobody, nobody got, got you. you. They got your gift, but Who's Chew? They never got you. They never got you. And God is touching you. He's using it to touch you. He's going to make a man. That's when the Neutner came to town there. Okay, so this Neutner thing ain't new. This Neutner thing's been around a while. Talking about the spirit. But the actual spirit, when God looks inside of you all, when he sees you, who you really are, which is your spirit, amen? amen. Your, your true self is a spirit who possesses a soul. You have a soul and you live in a physical body here on this earth. You won't live on this physical body up in heaven, just your spirit's there. So, so. So this space case is trying to tell me that because of that, well, women can preach. Because of that, women can pastor. Because of that, she's an apostle. Duh. What in the world does that have to do with anything? I can't believe guys actually, effeminate dudes, it reminds me of this, the Seventh-day Adventists. They are the fruitiest dudes you will ever see in your life. And it reminds me of those passive Seventh-day Adventist dudes that sit there and let this woman preach to them, this Jezebel, preach to them. It just baffles my mind. Uh, your true self is your spirit. You, you are a spirit. So when God looks at you, your spirit, not your physical body, your spirit, when God looks at the real you, he doesn't see a man or a woman. Oh, so in other words, when God sent the angel, when God sent the angel to Mary, um, he didn't see a woman. You know, he, he didn't see a woman. Well, why didn't he why didn't he make a man pregnant? Well, because in the beginning, God made them male and female, and the woman was the, and, and Jesus was the, the seed of the woman. Yeah. So everything she says makes no sense at all. It's not even applicable. He doesn't. He doesn't. And hallelujah, this is one of the things that, 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 that God is revealing in this revival Amen. to people. Because how many, how many, how many people of God that, that God wanted to use on this earth just were rejected because they were women, you know? It's not like God's like, okay, well, in the year 2019, then I will, then I will choose to use women. No. Like he chose to use women before, but they just weren't. The enemy had blinded people from receiving them. Okay, so the enemy blinded people from receiving those women. So that's why Jesus didn't ordain a woman. Because Jesus could have ordained a woman and set a new order for leadership, but the enemy must have blinded Jesus then. The enemy must have blinded Jesus then because... That's why women couldn't be leaders in the church back then. That's why women weren't leaders in the church back then. Because the enemy blinded Jesus. Well, 
if I take her words, then yeah, that would be the, the logic because that's nowhere in the King James Bible. Hey, Danielle says that there are there are some there are some manly men in the SDA church. Well, then why would they be under a banner of a woman? Why would they why would they be in a movement that was started by Ellen G. White? Why would they follow Ellen G. White's writings? Why would they submit themselves to Ellen G. White's writings? Why would they do that if they were manly men? If they were God fearing men, why would they follow a woman? Can you answer that? Danielle, can you answer that? I'll wait for your answer, but I'll keep moving. Yes, so how many people have been missing out? What God wanted to do? They're women. So in this revival, this is one of the things we are going over, we are going right over right now in this new series is is uncovering the things that the enemy has hidden from uncovering the things that the enemy has hid so now biblical christians that hold to the role of the sexes and the office of a bishop and the way god has intended it to be right right then they're part of the enemy's plan We're, we're part of the enemy's plan because we are dead set against women pastors because the Bible is. This is how witches work. Do you understand that? Now, I've said this to you before, and I'll say it again. These are witches that's who they are and that's what they do they deceive many what she's saying is she is lying she is perverting the word of god and she is teaching contrary to the scriptures all under the guise of loving Jesus and the Jesus that she loves is not the one found in this book. The one that she is speaking of is that other Jesus, that other gospel, that other spirit, the false Christ and false apostles that shall arise speaking perverse things to draw men away after them that's who she is she is a witch i can't get any more plainer for you she is a witch people amen Remember last week, we, 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 we talked about how in revival, God is uncovering things that the enemy's hidden. He's restoring things. He's lifting the veil, revealing truth that's been hidden. So this is one of the truths that he's revealing. Amen? Amen. Is that women are supposed to be used by God just as men. Um, no, they're not, because uh, I can't be a godly mother. Um... I can't have babies. I can't be a godly mother, and I can't be a godly wife. But the Bible gives instructions for a lady and how to be a godly, virtuous woman. And I can't be that. So we're not the same. We're different. There's no difference in the spiritual realm. Amen? So I'm teaching you this so you can understand why uh, there's, it's not like spiritual fathers are better than spiritual mothers or like you should. It's not like spiritual fathers are better than spiritual mothers. It's your problem. What's wrong with you anyway? Desire, I want a spiritual father. You should desire to have a spiritual parent. But 
spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers are the same because we're talking about spiritual things. We're not talking about physical mothers and physical fathers. We're talking about spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. So the purposes of the... So she definitely resents men for a reason. She could have had bad experience with men. A lot of these witches like Paula White, Beth Moore, um, all of these witches, uh, a lot of them uh, had bad men take advantage of them. And as a result, they have to conquer men. They have to rise up above men and they have to conquer men. Hey, Danielle uh, said there are some godly people in the SDA church, and I was told she wasn't a preacher, just a prophetess. Uh, the SDA church does not preach the gospel, and they trust in the law to save them. They believe that Sunday is the mark of the beast, and they preach a false gospel. They exalt the fourth commandment above all the other commandments, which Jesus Christ is to be exalted above all things, because Jesus Christ is better than the law. Danielle, you don't know what you're talking about. Go watch my videos on the SDA church. I take their own words, what they said, I've preached on it about, I don't know, maybe 10 hours of preaching on it or so, and I've taught on it. Go listen to it, and then you'll be instructed, and then you'll understand exactly what the SDA do and how they do it. That's all I'm going to say about that. And by the way, um, she had no business teaching in mixed in mixed assemblies she started her own churches she preached in those churches she led those churches and she was some kind of mystic prophet in those churches and that's the truth a spiritual parent in your life are the same whether it's a mom or dad whether it's a father or mother the spiritual purposes the reason that god puts them in your life the reason why you need them are the same they don't change spiritual persons right spiritual persons let's get that straight it's spiritual persons you know you can't you can't be having those sexes or anything like that it's not like it's not like on physical where the mom has certain gifts that, that only they can give, and the father has certain attributes and gifts that only they can give. It's not like that because we're talking about the spiritual realm. We're talking about the spiritual realm, losers. What's the matter with you? Huh? If you just had the Neutner like she did, then you would understand this stuff and you wouldn't be such an egghead idiot. Okay. Now, this lady... Not T.D. Jake, sorry. Um, this lady, and I use that term loosely because I don't think she's a lady, but this woman lays hands on all these other people and fills those churches with demons. Okay, let me get to, oops, wrong one, let's see. So these, so you will notice from this video, I'm going to show you this now, and you will notice from this video, when you look at it, who does all the talking first? Who's the first one to open her mouth? Who's the first one? Who's got the Neuton? Okay? And listen, she craved the Neuton. She was looking for the Neutner. And he's like Santa Claus in the charismatic churches. The Neutner is coming to town. The Neutner is coming to town. He's coming. He is coming. Are you ready? Here we go. Heather, and this is my husband, Larry, and we co-pastor a church. Okay, first off, we co-pastor a church. I see. So, where's that in the scriptures? 
I never saw a female pastor in the Bible, so you invented one. I see. Hmm, interesting. You, you just invented one. We co-pastor, but I'm doing all the talking. Um, we don't have time to have a discussion about the Bible version issue, but if you want to go to sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley, you can type in KJV and you can look in there and I'll give you all the teachings that you can want on the King James Bible. And if not, uh, we can direct you to other things. But there's a reason why we use the King James Bible. Okay, so you can go listen to that sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. Go over there and type in KJV, and then you can find your answer. We're going to move on with this teaching, though. All right. Um, so they got an impartation like Heidi Baker. Impartation, impartation, legacy, 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 impartation, legacy. Remember her? Remember that crazy psycho? Yeah, I remember her. Okay, uh, pastors received an impartation. So watch. But make no mistake about it. She's in charge. She's doing all the talking. In Redlands, about an hour and a half from here. And I just True wanted to, True Grace Church. And I just wanted to share the testimony that I was introduced to Apostle Catherine online through Facebook. And... I was tremendously drawn by the Holy Spirit to the ministry. That that's who it was. It was the Holy Spirit that drew you to some lady that has no authority to call herself an apostle and to do that work. You were drawn to that? Really? You were drawn to, by the Holy Spirit. So God's Spirit took you to this woman. Really? You ever read the Bible verse, try the spirits, whether they are of God? Let, let's look at that real quick, huh? Shall we look at that real quick? Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, wherever you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. If it speaks against who Christ is and his order, by the way, the Apostle Paul talked about that. Look what Paul said here. He says, if any man teach otherwise, it can set not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing. But doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, and evil surmisings. See, hold on a second. Oops. Let's see. I can't find the verse I'm looking for right this second, but that's okay. Fourteen or fifteen, Justin? How old are you now? Let me get back to this video here.
They don't know the Seventh Day Adventists don't know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm sorry, but they're not serious about the gospel. They don't even know it. Now back to these back to these Jezebels. Ahab and this is Ahab. This is Jezebel. Ahab, Jezebel. It is something I know is so needed in the body of Christ. Um, to me, it's like actually getting in the plane and getting it in the air as opposed to just messing around on the runway. And so I love teaching. I have a gift of teaching, pastoring. Oh, you have the gift of pastoring. Uh, no, you don't. Uh, no, you don't. You don't have the gift of pastoring. You might have the gift of being a mother, right? You might have a gift of being a mother and shepherding shepherding your um, your own children, nurturing your own children, but you don't have a gift for pastoring, not to be used in that nature. But we really wanted to walk in the power, and we've always been wanting the fivefold ministry at our church. However, there's not a lot of pastors that I know are really embracing that. And then I saw 5F Church. I came here in June, and as I watched Apostle Catherine minister, set people free, and walk in the deliverance ministry, I came twice, and then I said, I want that impartation. And so I made my way up to the front. I've been a believer for 42 years. I want that impartation. Holy buckets. I mean, they sound like they are straight, straight out of Babylon. They just sound like a bunch of witches. I made my way up to the front. I said, I want this. I need this because the people in our church. I need people in my church pulling buckets out and puking in them. I need people puking. I need to be casting out devils and watching people puke on the stage. I'm telling you that. What was I thinking? That's what I was missing. I mean, here I thought the gospel was repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Here I thought, here I thought that that the Bible was was to be the answer and uh, uh, that, that the Bible was to be the answer and, the, and, the, and that men were supposed to be uh, delivered from their sins through, through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here I thought that it was the gospel that was going to be preached. Oh no, you don't understand. You, you need this impartation and you need people puking in your church. You, you, need, you need people puking in your church. You need people with buckets down there. You need people rolling around, screaming, flipping around like a fish out of water. That's what you need. And what your problem is. That's What was I thinking? Here I thought the power of God was in the gospel. What was I? Th what, this? No, no, no. It must be in this impartation. Because the Neutner has to come, and then you get the impartation, and then and then you're, I mean, then you got people flipping around your church. That's what pastors need. These pastors, they receive the impartation. Church need it. I need it for my life. He needed it. So now what's been like four months we've been coming. And she's like, she's like, he needs it too. I'm his wife. I'm gonna tell him what he needs. She's got the impartation and the gift. So he's just standing around there just waiting for that woman to speak. You notice who the first one was to speak? It was the woman. Why? Welcome to the spirit of Jezebel. Welcome to that spirit of Jezebel. Gotta be known. Gotta let everybody know her gifts. Gotta let everybody know what she's gonna do. Gotta let everybody know about that. She's gotta speak first.
and lord it over him. And he's too seduced to realize that's what's happening. That man is so seduced by that same Jezebel spirit that's over all those SDA men that sit there and have women preach to him. You know those guys? Yeah, those guys. Those guys that follow Ellen G. White. Yeah. Those guys that that talk about the Roman Catholic Church and they rebuke what's going on in Rome and they tell you about all the stuff with Rome. However, they have a woman that rules over them. Right. Yep, those guys. Same guys I see at the fair when all the Pentecostal women come up and the charismatic Pentecostal women come up and they're, they're, da- they're outside there and, and they start preaching to us and the guy doesn't say anything. Same spirit. In our church need it, I need it for my life, he needed it. So now what's been like four months we've been coming and every service now, it's starting to happen at our church. Every time we gather, um, casting out demons is now something that's regularly happening in our church. You got a lot of devils in your church, lady. I mean, holy buckets. You're casting devils out of your people in your church every week. It's happening every week. We're casting devils out every week. Really? Really, lady? Really? Every week? (laughs) Happening all the time now. It's like a regular basis. We're just sitting there all of a sudden and Tommy just starts rolling around on the floor. We get the puke buckets out. People start puking. Jimmy pukes the devil up. Neutner shows up. We start smacking people on the head. Only problem is you can't find any of that in the Bible. It's amazing. You know when you know something but you don't know it? We've read the scripture, Jesus cast out demons. And- we, you know, we read the scriptures. I mean, Jesus cast out demons. We read the Bible. I mean, and he like dismisses the scriptures. But see, the most important thing is for me to experience it. I have to experience everything. I can't believe by faith what God's word says. I have to experience. So I got to go to some devil and have this witch impart devils to me. And she lays her hands on me and gives me devils. And now I take that back to my church and I fill all them with devils. And now we all have a bunch of devils and we all just cast devils out of each other all day long. You know, not that Bible stuff, but real stuff like casting out devils, you know, real fivefold ministry like that. Until we went, I went and looked at Mark. 16 where he says these are the signs that follow those who believe and so she went first and she was getting it so i i was kind of tempted i i have i mean honestly do you know what they make it sound like she went first and she was getting it i mean she took a few hits of acid you know she started tripping i was like hey i don't know about that tripping thing i don't don't know about that i don't know about that anointing i don't know if i want that guy touching me or not are you sure I mean, that guy shows up, weird stuff happens. That Neutner. That Neutner shows up there. I don't know about him showing up. and I, He smacked her on the head, but I wasn't sure if I was going to let him smack me. So I just kind of watched it. I watched it on TV. I watched her get smacked in the head by the Neutner. And I just wondered, oh my goodness, he's a Neutner. That Neutner's going to hit her upside the head. I kind of watched her get hit upside the head by the Neutner. And I was like, eh, I don't know about that one. I'll watch that for a while the gift of suspicion <laughs> and and so I was a little doubtful but I read and I watched and I read and I watched and so a lot of times she would be down here and I'd be watching at home the first thing I did is I started working on me I started renouncing and casting stuff off me and the first thing I started <laughs> did you hear what he said he goes the first thing I started doing was casting stuff off of me man I was casting devils out of myself first I was like devil be gone 
He's like, devil of too many Wendy's, be gone. I declare you gone. Devil of cheeseburgers, I declare you gone. I renounce chocolate candy bars. Gone. I renounce ketchup. I'm tired of it. It's done. And, and then I asked Heather to pray for me, and it Hey, Heather, can you pray for me? Because I think there's like a bunch of devils in me. So can you just pray for me, Heather? And if you just do that, Heather, if you just pray for me, man, I'll, I'll be better. I need that anointing. I need the impartation. I need that. It was like, oh, my gosh. And I have a very strong prophetic gift, and so I saw... I have a... Okay, he's going to tell you. He had a very strong... <laughs> he, he had a very strong I have a very strong prophetic gift so I can see them devils coming a mile away I know they're there I can see them okay here we go ready ah things coming out let me back let me back up let me back up here you don't want to miss this this is this pray for me and it was like oh my gosh and I have a very strong prophetic gift and so I saw things coming out. Mm -hmm. I saw what they were and it was amazing. I saw what they were. I could see it because I have a prophetic gift to like see. I I have a prophetic gift to see spooky devils come out of people. I mean, they just start flying out of their mouth, flying out their nose like boogers. People farmer blowing devils out. <laughs> farmer blowing devils right out their nose come flying straight out, puking devils out into a bucket. I saw what they were. Okay. Okay, there, buddy. Okay. So he saw him. She was casting him out, and he saw him. He's like, there they are. One came out my nose just now. Do you see that booger that flew out my nose? That was a devil. That was the devil of booger. All because... The Neutner came and visited them. By the way, broadcasts like this are the reason why I never get invited anywhere. <laughs> Even my Baptist brother, are like, we can't have that guy, and he's going to make our church mad. You just cannot come here. You are going to, you, you are just going to. I know I don't preach in too many churches. <laughs> Snot rocket demons out of them. <laughs> I saw them coming out. Of them. <laughs> hey, listen, you got to have fun, man. You got to. If you're going to do this and you're going to reprove the unfruitful works of darkness, you got to have some fun doing it, man. There ain't nothing wrong with having fun doing it. And I enjoy it, man. I enjoy it. Because these stinking devils, I like, I, I'm just like Elijah. I, I thoroughly enjoy mocking them. Okay. Uh, here we go. And we said we were going to start doing it. So the first, uh, <laughs> They literally act like <laughs> they literally act. They literally act like they're doing drugs. Do, do they not act like they're doing drugs? We were like, and we were like, no way. And we were like, we said, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We are going to trip on these devils. We are going to get the impartation. We are going to get it. And we are going to do some tripping on devils. That's 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 like what they're talking about. It's so stupid. It has nothing to do with biblical Christianity. It has nothing to do with the power of the Holy Ghost, which is to save men's lives and to change men's lives and to make them new creatures in Christ. That old things are passed away and all things are become new. It's not that. It's not Bible. All right. Let me back up just a little bit here. 
and we said we were going to start doing it. So the first, uh, win, I think it was a Wednesday night, I think she did it a couple times and I got up on a Wednesday night and I called people forward, had never done it before and just stepped out in faith. And we Okay, like nobody was doing it before and my wife just decided she was going to do it, so she started doing it. And then started stepping then I started stepping out by faith. You call that faith? You call that faith? Oh my goodness, I've been going for two hours and twenty seven minutes. <laughs> I gotta stop. I didn't know this. I'm never gonna get home. Oh my goodness. Oh, I didn't know I went this long. Oh man. I was having too much fun, man. I just kept going. <laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me I was on here for two hours and 27 minutes? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't even realize I went that long. I'm surprised my wife didn't message me. She's probably like. That's funny, man. Oh. We saw him getting delivered. And so now it's been every service for probably a month. about a month, a month and a half that I always do an opportunity at the end of the service to come up for prayer. And we always see manifestations and we always see people. <laughs> That's so bad. Do you hear what he said? We always, he's admitting it. Every service we see manifestations of devils. Well, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's not a good thing. You, you shouldn't be seeing devils manifest at your church every week. That's a problem. That's not normal. Yes, there were times that Jesus cast out devils. Yes, there were times that those things happened that the apostles did. But it sure wasn't every church service. It sure wasn't every church service. Right? I mean, it's like every church service you're casting devils out. We'll get free. Catherine was a catalyst that kind of kicked us in gear to go to a, another level, uh, an area. Catherine took us, the apostle Catherine took us up to another level, a whole nother level of devil de demonic uh, possession. I mean, I mean, her, her ministry took us up another notch. I mean, we really skyrocketed into it. It was just, man, we needed that lady. Area that we hadn't really stepped into yet. We had the word of faith. We believe for healing. We see miracles in the healing realm. But the deliverance hadn't happened yet until we got hooked up with Catherine. She's coming to our church yeah. in yeah. Redlands, California, November 29th, the Monday night at 6 p.m. Wow, so lovely. everybody come out. Please come out. Bring your family members. You will not regret it. You will experience freedom, revival, joy, and peace. Oh, what would you give for peace in your life? Mm. Um, Catherine ain't going to bring me peace in my life. Jesus Christ brings me peace in my life. Wow. Uh, Sandy Smith says the male members of these women run churches are pretty creepy. They once visited our Baptist church because one of their members defected from their Alliance church to our KJV church. Wow. Okay. So anyway, wow, that's something. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I have anything else I want to bring you on that. Did this one. Did this one. Is that the one where... Man, where's that one funny one at? I wish I could find it. Oh, this one's not funny. This is the last one, and I gotta go. I could do a lot more, okay? Uh... All right, here's the last one. This shows you the spirit.
This is not biblical. What this kid says, it's not biblical. I was um, I was in my room. I was all depressed. I was depressed with my life. I didn't think life mattered. And then my mom told me to come here. She said, "Angel, come on, let's go, let's go see someone preach the word of God." And I didn't want to. I said no. I I was real disobedient. And I said no. I didn't want to do nothing. I just want to stay in my room depressed. I used to like doing drugs. And now when I came here, it was overwhelming for me. I was in the crowd. And then I went to the front. My family was called to the front. And then this woman prayed for me. I don't know her name yet. I don't know this woman. But she prayed for me. And then I, I fell back to the ground. And when I fell back to the ground, it was like a snap of the fingers. Like it, it was in just in front of the throne of God. Like I was in front of the throne of God. And I I asked God, why is these uh, these creatures covering you? And I said, what are they called? And he said, these creatures are called serpent. And I was like, what are they? Why do they have six wings? And then they were covering their eyes and they're singing to God and covering their feet. And then they're covering God's glory. And then I'm like, I can't, I can't. This is too much for me. Why am I being shown this? Why is this happening to me? And then um, after that, I came back and then he said, I wipe every tear from your eye. And then dirt started coming out of my eyes. And then I couldn't see. And when dirt came out of my eyes, I started getting all these scriptures from the Bible. I didn't know what they were. This scripture that touched me a lot was Matthew 19, 26. It says, Jesus told the Pharisees, Well, man, everything is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26, that's what Jesus said to the Pharisees. John 1, 1 in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and everything was made through him, and without him not He was reading that. Did you see him looking down at his eyes and squinting? He was reading that. Nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. See, he's looking down at that. He's reading that. Light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend the light. So Jesus says in the Bible that we're the light of the world, that we light up this world because this world is dark. All of this world is full of darkness, all of sin. Um, so the um, people that spread God's word are the light, spreading the light to other people. And so basically they put a seed in the other person and that when they give their life to God and they, that light shines from the darkness and then that's the light of the world. That's what... Okay, by the way, isn't that picture creepy? Look at this picture. Like she's some kind of angel or something. It's weird. Now here's the point. That kid did not describe repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He did not He did not describe the Bible. He did not describe biblical salvation. He described a vision that he had and he or whatever he had, a demonic vision and just because he had Bible verses, Satan quotes Bible verses. That doesn't mean anything. Right? This is the last one, and I got to go. I said that about the last one, but I forgot that I wanted to show you this one. This was the original. Thanks to Carrie Murrow for sharing this. Today, we'll look at a post from January 23rd, 2022, that I'm sure most will agree is ridiculous. And the jumpy editing is from them, not me. Like it's only four seconds in, and you can see the girl is grinning, and it gets better. This is Catherine, this is the Apostle Catherine Crick, right? And she's supposed to be delivering somebody. Oh, Jesus. No! No! So what's happening? The girl was screaming and crawling just seconds ago, but now she's just sitting there being well behaved while a mic is held up. So I guess it's the other girl's turn to act up. Demon is making sure he wipes back her hair. Wouldn't want hair in her face while thrashing around.
She's totally smiling, and this is nothing but an act. And did you notice the girls looking at each other? It always seems like while one is calm, the other's acting, and then they change. Not to mention the woman is completely immodest. The clothes that this woman wears is ridiculous. And look at her, being all well behaved again, even paying attention to Catherine while well, it's the other girl's turn to perform. <laughs> I think one of the possible... Yeah, that little girl made some sort of covenant when she was like eight and she was eating her Happy Meals. She made a covenant with Satan. Just, you know, there's a covenant there. Well, reasons for the choppy editing could be to cut out the parts where they are smiling and giving this hoax away. Do you know any kind of covenant that you, either of you could have made or people in the past generations? I know there was a cult practice in my family line. I don't know who did it, but I don't know. Like my brothers, sisters, uncles, cousin, nephews, uh, um, third uh, cousin uh, twice removed. That dude, that dude had a talisman. So therefore, there's got to be something in my line. So we need to go all the way back through the line and that covenant that was made. And we need to break that covenant way back then so then I could be released. See, see how ridiculous that is? See how that's not biblical? Wait a minute, Pastor. Are you saying you don't believe in generational curses? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do I believe that? If you train your children wrong and they learn traits from you, that they could, they, they, if they learn sexual misconduct from you, if they're molested, if they go through bad things, if they see bad things, if bad things happen to them, that it's going to impact them? Yes. Do I believe that they're all going to be possessed because somebody else is? No. I don't. I believe the gospel is able to free anyone. They don't need some side sideshow WWE show of deliverance from Mrs. Pantsuit that's tight enough to paint it on. The oh, you repent on it on behalf of your family. I repent on it on behalf of my family that I had too many Slurpees when I was six. So I repent of that now. I, I do. I repent to that for my family. I think my grandpa was a drunk, so therefore it's my fault somehow. So I repent of it. Girls, I mean, the demons in the girls are always so well behaved when Catherine or either of the two parents are speaking. Every, every covenant that was made, every path that was made from the cult practicing in the past generations, it made you come in these girls. How do you renounce depression? Um, how do you renounce depression? That's impossible. Most people, if they ever suffer depression, they can't, they didn't will themselves into it. All people, they didn't will themselves into it, and they can't will themselves out of it. Rage, sadness, and depression. What? See everything now. I 
someone a long time ago had homicidal thoughts. Um, that is the most ridiculous thing you could ever imagine, an unbiblical thing. But I have seen charismatics do this very thing. And I've seen closet charismatics do it and think people have to repent of every single thing that ever happened and try to find something that would lock a devil into them, that that a devil would keep them. Like the gospel and repenting and putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ wouldn't free you. Our spirit of homicide of myself and my whole body. Suicide, there's more. So what they're saying is, oh, thoughts, if you have bad thoughts, that's devils. I'm sure devils can try to influence your thoughts. They, they shoot fiery darts at us. But I don't need to renounce what the devil does. If I entertain bad thoughts, then I ask God to forgive me. That's part of being a sinner and having a fallen nature. Right now, to say every last thing. Ah! Greed, greed, coveting. What the hell is it? We are now suicide, greed, greed, coveting in the name of the wonderful Jesus Christ. Do you see how? Do you see how what they're doing? Do you see how what they're doing is they're glorifying sin. They're glorifying sin and not Jesus Christ. They're making a big deal about sin and a very little deal about Jesus. Now, sin is wicked and it's what Jesus died for. What they are doing is maximizing sin and wickedness, and they're making these people confess this sin and wickedness in front of all these people. It's wicked. And it's not the gospel. What an absolute joke. And now it's the other one's turn, I guess. Did you catch that? Another big smile. And three was the magic. They started coughing and puking, and that means they're free from devils because they puked. What a complete circus. On the count of three, one, two, three, and the crowd goes wild, and the demons start obeying. And what a bunch of deceived individuals. We can't laugh at this because these false teachers are the ones that are deceiving them. Some may truly love the Lord, but are being strung along to believe this nonsense. Like, what a completely organized and fake event. When did we see this in the Bible? How about never? That's your cue to give a big smile, girls. Now. 
These people should be ashamed for supporting this nonsense. And no, Apostle Catherine, you are not releasing an anointing of peace and joy and an abundant life now. And may you walk in the power of God and deliver families, children, and may your testimony go across the world and deliver children and whole families that millions of eyes open up through you and be set free as you have. And did you notice that the girl in pink is often looking at her older sister for approval? But the one in blue isn't acting anymore. She showed no joy or excitement of being delivered. She just stood there the whole time like she was glad this was over. But the pink girl just played along for the entire show. They end with this post. The following day, the mother testified, We have been on a long journey with deliverance, but for the first time, our girls have total freedom. The youngest, J.C., who is eight, received not only freedom, but also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Really? How do you know that? Did she start babbling in gibberish? Folks, I apologize if I sounded a bit angry in this video, but this stuff really bothers me. There's just too much of this nonsense out there and people are being deceived with these silly shows. How dare these false teachers be doing this to people? I pray for all of you that are following these phony deliverance ministries that God would open up your eyes to understand that it's nothing but a show and a con and that you need to get back to Bible basics now. If you That was good advice right there. Get back to the Bible. If you ask me how how in the world can we be deli how, how is a person delivered? They are delivered through the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how they're delivered, not through the anointer. Not through the charismatic anointer. The anointer does not deliver them. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Danielle says this uh, again. For some reason, this woman really likes to oppose me. Um, and she says this, I find that hard to believe that generational curses don't exist for my family have a number of problems. I believe that spiritually, spirituality has something to do with it. My mom had tarot cards at one point. Well, you know what? You don't get to blame your mom for her tarot cards. You either obey God, Danielle, or you don't obey God. You either repent and believe the gospel and follow Jesus Christ, and you obey the scriptures, or you don't obey the scriptures. That's totally up to you. That has nothing to do with your mom, your dad, your brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, nephews, nieces, or anybody else. It has to do with your relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It says when the Son of Man shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Yes, Olivia O'Neill, I do see your, your uh, writing there. Hope you're doing well. That's what the gospel is. The gospel is it gives you uh, freedom. I'm not, I'm not subject to some curse. Guess what? My grandpa was an alcoholic. Guess what? I'm not because I've been saved by the grace of Almighty God. I was delivered from those things because I got saved by the grace of God. And no devil can tie anything to me for what my grandpa did 40 years ago. I got saved by the grace of God, the old-fashioned way. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel which is able to save your soul. The power of God unto salvation. And you know what the mistakes my parents made raising me by God's grace? I don't make those mistakes. I don't, I don't sin that way. Do, do I sin? Yeah. Do I have to repent? Yeah. Am I subject to what my parents did and how they raised me? No. I'm not raised anywhere near like my parents raised me. I don't raise my children any, anywhere near like my, I was raised. 
I raise them to obey the scriptures. I raise them to have the power of God in their lives. I raise them to know the gospel, which is able to save their soul. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. I'm no victim of Satan. I'm not a victim. I'm a victorious Christian. And I have the Holy Ghost of God inside of me, sealed under the day of redemption and the power of Almighty God. I don't need anything else. I don't need some anointer like that to come along and break some curse. Jesus Christ broke it the day he saved my soul and changed me and made me a new creature in Christ. Old things were passed away and all things became new. It ain't what my mama did. It ain't what my daddy did. It's what Jesus Christ has done for me on Calvary. That's the gospel. Nobody has to be enslaved to their past. Nobody has to be enslaved to some child molester, some wicked thing that ever happened to them when they were a kid or anything else or some devils or some demons or some wizards or some witches or anything else. You get saved by the grace of God. You get delivered. And you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's the gospel. That's the power of God unto salvation. And you've got to get into church, and you've got to get baptized, and you've got to walk with Christ, and be discipled, and learn the scriptures, and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so sick and tired of this charismatic, spooky, noitner garbage. It ain't got nothing to do with the scriptures. It don't deliver a soul. It only enslaves them and makes them more a child of the devil. God's the one that frees us. Jesus Christ paid it all. I don't look for some other deliverance. I don't look for some other deliverer. I've been delivered. I've been saved. That's the gospel. If you fell for some of these shenanigans, then you need to repent of them and get back to the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. And that's the truth, friend. As it is in the scriptures. I got to get out of here, man. I've been, I've been going, I don't know how long I've been going here. Whoa, almost three hours. I got to get out of here. All right, everybody. God bless you. Keep praying for one another. Uh, if you want to, number one, pray for us. We're going out preaching this weekend and, and tracting this weekend. Pray for us. Pray for the Lord to bless the tracks. Pray for people to be saved and their lives to be changed and to have the power of God in their lives. Pray for us to be a good witness while we're out there. Pray for our safety while we're out there, please. If you want to know more about our ministry, you can go to sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. Latest sermons are on there. This one is one of the latest ones uh, that was last week on there. Actually, that's not one of the latest ones. Last week's sermons uh, are on there now, The Virtuous, virtuous Womanhood. Danielle, I came at you with scripture. If that offends you, get right with God then. You told me what you thought the what you thought about generational curses, and I told you what the Bible said. If you don't like the Bible, there ain't nothing I can do about it. You ain't the first woman that got mad at me, and rest assured, you certainly will not be the last. Get in line. There's a long train ahead of you. I'm fine with it. Believe it. I'm fine with it. Anyway, you can go to sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley, and you can follow this, the, the, uh, the ministry and the sermons that are on there tomorrow. Uh, we'll be live uh, 7 30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, you can you can hear the preaching of God's word there. Uh, from here tomorrow night, we'll be back in the Book of Acts. And um, by the way, you know something I noticed, Danielle. You never do ask for forgiveness when you say things. You never do ask anybody to forgive you. You never do. You never do. Uh, 
um, get things right when you when you say things you shouldn't say. You never do receive instruction. That's a bad heart. And I'm going to tell you something. You ain't going to get married to a good man with a heart like that. You better ask God to help you. There ain't a man that's going to marry you with a bullheaded, stiff-necked heart like that. You better get your heart right with God. And maybe you will get married when you get a soft, submissive spirit. Maybe you will. But until then, don't expect God to give you a husband when you have a spirit like that. Because you, you have a spirit that gets angry with men that try to correct you. And that's just the truth. That's the way it is. And I've been around enough women to know, to know when they're like that. Believe me. Anyway, all right. Also, uh, if you want to support our ministry, uh, you can go to PayPal and send us uh, salvationpreacher at gmail.com or pastorcooley at icloud.com. You can send a gift through there if you want to. Uh, or you can mail us something at the bottom of the screen there. So anyway, uh, pray for us, though. Pray for our project that we're doing. Pray for the studio that we're building. I got to get home. I'm getting out of here. God bless you all. Take care.